6.5, slope point form of the equation for a linear function. Slope point form of the equation is another form of a linear function. It's just another way to write the same basic information. This is a way to write an equation that describes a straight line. Now, a couple parts of it aren't any different. You still have your y variable, you still have your x variable, and you still have your slope. But these two parts are what's going to be different. That is a point on the line. And an important part to notice when you're looking at that point on the line, if you are looking carefully, you will see that the equation has a negative sign on it. That causes no end of problems. What that means is whatever the signs of the x and y coordinates are, the signs in the equation are the opposite. Okay, let's let's look a little more closely at these linear functions in slope point form. Remember? y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And don't forget, because of these negative signs, whatever these points are right here are going to be the opposite sign of what you see in the equation. I'm going to keep hammering on this point and going through it again and again and again, but the hopes that it sticks. All right, part A asks us to describe the graph of the linear function with the following equation. If we look at our form, it's a couple things we can pull from there. Slope is this number in front of the brackets. So in that equation, our slope, or m, is one third. So it's got a rise of one and a run of three. The other point part is our points. That is x1 and y1. Remember, opposite signs of what you see in the equation. And it goes through the point. So x1 in the equation says plus 4, so I take the opposite sign, which is minus 4. y1 in the equation says minus 2, so I take the opposite sign of that, and I go plus 2. There's the important information I'm getting out of the equation. Now let's put it on the graph. Now just like in slope-intercept form, all we did is we found a starting point and then drew it based on the slope. Well now instead of using the y-intercept as that starting point, I'm going to use this point of negative 4, positive 2. So negative 4 on the x, positive 2 on the y, puts my point right there. But I want to circle that so we can remember that that's our starting point. Now, we can continue drawing this line based on that slope. Remember it is rise over run. So rise of 1, run of 2 is my point. That should give me enough information to graph it now. There is our line. We worked with a point that we started with, and we used our slope, and we were able to draw the line. Let's try that one more time. Here's our equation, y plus 1 equals negative 1 half x minus 2. Starting with our slope, this piece right here, so our slope, equals negative one half. Rise of negative one, run of two. And it goes through the point, and we're gonna use this piece and this piece. This is x1, that's y1. So our point, x1 in the equation says minus two, so it must, must be plus two. And our y coordinate in the equation says plus one, so our point is actually minus 1. Remember, opposite signs on that point. We don't change the slope, just the point, just the signs of the point. Let's draw that starting point on our graph. 2 on the x, minus 1 on the y. There's going to be our starting point. Let's start drawing in our slope, this piece right here. Remember, that is rise over run. So a rise of minus 1, so that goes down 1 run a 2 to the point. Put a ruler on. And there's our line drawn using point slope form. 
let's write an equation using a point on the line and a slope. So what I've got here is I've got a graph of a function. I've got two points on that graph, and then it wants us to write the equation. First, it wants it in slope point form. That makes sense because it's easier to do slope point form in this equation. And we'll get why get to y in a minute. So let's start with the uh, general form of the equation. Y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So all I need is one point and a slope. Let's start with that slope. From here, we've got a rise of 3 and a run of 4. All right. m equals rise of 3, run of 4. So m equals 3 quarters. Next, we need a point. I can pick either of those two points. It doesn't matter. Let's go with this one up here. That's 3, 1. 3 on the x, 1 on the y. Let's put everything into the equation. This y stays as a y. Instead of y1, we're going to put the y part of the coordinate. And we have to do the opposite sign of what the point is. So that's going to become a minus 1. Equals. Instead of the m, we've got three quarters. We've got the x in the equation. That doesn't change. And instead of the x1, we're going to put that. We use the opposite sign because of this right here. That's going to be a minus 3. y minus 1 equals 3 quarters x minus 3. There I have the equation in slope point form. Now I briefly want to go through what would happen if I had picked the other point instead. So if I had used the point negative 1, comma, negative 2, this one right here. Your equation is going to look different, but it's still going to refer to the same line. Both would be acceptable answers. So let me quickly, I'm going to very quickly do this. So y from the equation, this is x1, y1, minus y1, opposite sign. So I'm going to go plus 2 equals, instead of m, I'm going to put 3 quarters. x is there, minus x1, so minus a minus 1 becomes a plus 1. There's the other form of the equation. Both would be acceptable answers. Just like if you instead had chosen this point down here or this point up here. Both of those would also work. All right, let's move on to part B. Part B asks you to take that and write it in slope-intercept form. Remember slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Now, we didn't use slope-intercept form on this graph. I'll clear this up a little bit. Because when I zoom in, I'm looking for that y-intercept. It doesn't cross on a nice, neat, perfect grid line. I could guess at it, but that, I want something more accurate than that. I don't want a number that I've just guessed and winged. It. So I know my point slope form is correct. So I'm going to use some algebra to convert it over into slope-intercept form. Throughout this chapter, you're going to have to get good at transferring back and forth because there's times when one is better and times when the others are better. Slope point form is almost always easy to figure out and calculate and write down the formula, but if I have to do any work with it, it's a more complicated form of the formula. Slope intercept form, this one right here, is really quite simple. So let's convert it. Let me write my formula y minus 1 equals 3 quarters x minus 3. So we want to get isolate the y. I want to get it all by itself. I'm going to come back for that minus 1. I'm going to leave that there right now. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 3 quarters. I'm going to use the distributive property to multiply it into both pieces inside the brackets there. 3 quarters times x gives me 3 quarters x. 3 quarters times negative 3. Well, often when we're doing fractions like that, I'd like to do it over here on the side just so I don't make a mess. 3 quarters times 3. Remember when you're multiplying fractions, turn 3 over 1, top times top, bottom times bottom. 3 times 3 gives me 9 over 4. All right, minus 9 quarters. All right, next step. I can't add that negative 1 in with the y. I said we were going to come back for it later. Well, it's later. Let's move that 1 over to the other side. I've got a minus 1 now, so I'm going to add 1. Add 1. Because now I've got y equals 3 quarters x. And the same thing again. I've got some fraction work there. You can do this in your head. Great. 
But if not, let's do it on the side. Negative nine quarters plus one. Now, unlike multiplying, this time you do have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to go nine quarters. One is the same as four over four. Minus nine plus four, I've got minus five over four. That's my other part of the fraction. So I'll write that in. Minus five quarters. Here is my equation in slope intercept form. Let's make sure our y intercept looks right. If I, if I zoom in, minus five quarters, it's like one and a, it's ne like negative one and a quarter. And that is one down plus another quarter. This point looks like it's a quarter down. To me, that feels right. So once again, here is point slope form. Here is slope intercept form. Two different forms, both talking about the same line, both looking a little different, both having their own strengths and weaknesses. Let's do that one more time. So let's write it in slope point form to begin with. Write my equation down again. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Let's find our slope. From here to here, I've got a rise of minus 1 and a run of 3. So M equals negative one third. Don't be converting these fractions into decimals. We're looking at working for with exact values. And especially one third, you're going to end up rounding that off somewhere, somehow. So keep it as a fraction. Next, let's pick a point. I like that point right there. Let's pick the point one comma one. You could pick any of the other two points and it would work out fine. Your answer would look different, but it would still be correct. Let's put our pieces in. Y minus Y1 and this Remember, this is x1, y1. The y-coordinate of the point is 1, and we take the opposite, which is minus 1. Equals, my slope is negative 1 third. That stays the same sign. That one does not change. Times x. And then we do minus x1. So we take the opposite sign of whatever our x1 is. Positive 1, so it becomes a negative 1. And there, my point slope form. Let's do B. Rewrite that in slope-intercept form. I want to put it in Y equals MX plus B form. I am starting with Y minus 1 equals 1 third X minus 1. Use the distributive property. Oh, I forgot a negative sign on it. Use my distributive property to take this negative 1 third and multiply it into both of those. So Y minus 1. We'll come back to that one later. We've got minus 1 third X. Minus one third times one, minus times a minus is a positive, and one third times one is just going to be a third. Let's add one to both sides. Y equals negative one third x. That part doesn't change. One third plus one. You can do it in your head, great. If not, we'll do one third plus one. One third plus one is just three over three. We're looking at four thirds. There. Is my slope intercept form.